make sure you check out my website pcteach.me where you can look at all the videos in particular category orders also have the ability to contribute your own posts if you wish and I hope to see you there so following on from looking at how to create our first cube our next step is to actually start looking at the dimensions now if you're following these training sessions it's very easy for you to go down a different avenue explore the data yourself and get lost change it beyond recognition and so forth um, that's not um, being derogatory to yourself this is just more of a case of you're going to want to play um, so what I'm doing is at the beginning of each of these um, videos going forward is there will be actually a file you can download from our website pcteach.me um, if you register you'll be able to then download the starting point of this particular project so every video going forward there will be a starting point for you to actually go back to so you can download it from there so in this case um, I'm going to just go to the file menu and choose open and then in project um, solutions I'm going to go on to um, my desktop sorry I didn't read my desktop the C drive the PC teach me folder SSAS and within there um, I'm gonna open up the project called dimension structure which is number three and let's just open that up and so there we are we're now back um, into uh, my first cube um, um, but it's where it was left off at the end of the previous video what we're going to then talk about then is just to recap um, oops let's just open that up um, is that although we've now got this wonderful cube all the dimensions are just not worth using at the moment they are just unfortunately bland so let's have a look at say the customer information because that that's just useless to us so what we need to do is we need to amend the customer dimension so down here we will double click onto the um, dimension of customer and this will open up the editor and as you can see all it's done is it's brought in three fields and they're all keys which are absolutely pointless to the end user absolutely necessary for a cube so it knows the relationship between fact versus um, dimension one to many um, but absolutely useless to the end user so what we need to do is we need to actually start embellishing this information a bit more now there are two ways we can do this we can either amend the existing or just create a new dimension and I would say here that the wizard is pretty well it's not half bad actually so what I want you to do as tough as it sounds is if you've followed me to this point close the customer dimension down um, close down the cube as well if necessary and then on customer right click and delete oh yes we're going to delete it now this may kick and scream because it's now removed it from the cube as well um, but remember this is on our local machine the one which has been deployed to our server is still as was because we have to deploy it again now what we're going to do is just right click onto dimensions and choose new dimension again we get a wizard um, we just click onto next and again it asks us all these different things is it an existing table is it a timetable is it a timetable on the server um, are we going to use a non timetable in the data source right um, what does the non timetable want um, well let's um, let's just click on that one have a look at the templates um, what it does is it filters out anything where there's a date but as you can see I've got date templates account templates customer templates it's absolutely useless the reason why that's there again it's because of the training material the adventure works it's put the templates in if you do the templates you're not learning the product so we're going to ignore those um, the top three then existing table that's the one we are going to choose but the others generate a timetable in the data source view that creates a new time view a view that we've created in the past like that test one we did several um, chapters ago um, generate a timetable on the server that is an online real-time creation of a calendar um, generally not a good idea and we'll, we'll get into that in a bit so we'll leave it on existing table um, click on that and what we're after well we're after um, the customer table which oddly enough is the first one selected and then it's identifying what is the key column what is the primary key which is going to be involved with the one-to-many relationship it is going to be customer key it's already worked that out why because the data source views already told you what the um, the key is if I just change this to geography you'll see it's changed the geography key um, but this is a final step if you wanted to add another column in if you wanted to make a composite key for example multiple fields being joined together so we'll leave it on customer key 
and click on next and then it says ah right well I can actually include geography information at this point um, no untick it because we're going to make two dimensions we'll, we'll do it twice so with that unticked click on to next and then it says OK, um, dimension attributes. Specify the dimension attributes to select enable browsing to surface them as hierarchies. Ooh, now this sounds extremely complicated. It actually isn't, it just is growls worse than its bite. What we're basically saying at this point is there is going to be several fields that we actually want to display on our cube. Now to make matters more confusing for the um, designer we've gone from the word fields to attributes now there is a very good reason for the word attribute an attribute is one of many elements inside a dimension also an attribute does not necessarily have to conform to what the field is so an example of that is that you we've seen it already that when you were in the data source view you could put space bars and make it a friendly name you may want to change the format of the text you may want to change the format of the number therefore it becomes an attribute rather than a base field because you're not changing the field itself you're changing the attributes of that field and so therefore to keep them distinct we have now got fields which are in SQL and we've now got attributes which are in cubes but if you wanted to in layman's terms whittle up the path an attribute ultimately becomes a field in SQL terms but it is not a field in cubes so what we want to do is we want to pick some fields up from in here so I want the title uh, first name last name birthday um, not that interested in that one marital status yes gender um, yearly income total children English education yeah why not um, what else are we going to have we're going to have oh there's full name let's have full name as well and as you can see it's also including the geography key it's a good idea to keep the keys in because you don't know whenever you're going to need them so I'm going to leave it there but we're not going to actually show them. Notice enable browsing is actually turned off so the key is present you're just not going to see it from the front end. Um, so there we are, there they all are. Uh, the customer key also but think of it this way if it was the employee if it's the employee ID it may be worthwhile having so we'll leave that switched on. Um, if you want to add more it's not a problem we can always come back to them later but the important thing as well in here is we have the attribute type off to the side and it's basically saying what type of attribute is it obviously but if we click on the drop-down arrow it comes up with a load of different options so what in particular have we got? We've got charts of account, account name, account number, account type and so forth is it a template? Sort of. What it does is it actually processes that field in a specific way for um, dimensions to work optimally. Um, so it, it's a form of template, if you will, that if I select one of these, it will actually change several properties of that attribute, which we're going to go through step by step through this through these videos. Um, but it's just basically a quick way of getting through um, a large um, headache. Now, specifically, the date dimension is a very common one, which we'll be going through as a separate video, um, just solely on date dimensions. But these at attribute types will become very applicable um, a little bit later on. But for the time being, we're just going to leave them all on regular. So we click on next. And then it says, OK, well, there we are. We've got the customer. Um, and they're the fields, or sorry, the attributes, they're going to come across. So fine, I'm just going to click on finish. And there we go, we've now got our um, dimension. Now, what you may want to do is say, OK, well, let's have a look at it. Let's have a look at the data. Well, we do have a browser. Just the same way, if I open up this cube again, I've got a browser here. Um, but the browser here is looking at the entire cube, whereas, if I just close this again, the customer dimension is looking just purely at this one dimension. So if we click on browser, question before I do it, and pop quiz, is this going to work? Are you going to see it, yes or no? Well, the answer is no. The reason being is, at this point, what am I seeing? Well, I've got the customer key, geography key. Um, hang on, 
Did I not have English education, first name, full name, last name, etc.? Where are they? Well, they're not going to appear because currently it is only processed what is on live, which is what it was before we started playing. So what we need to do at this stage is we need to reprocess this dimension. So let's just process it again. And now it says, ah, well, it appears to be out of date. Do you want me to build it, syntactically check it, and deploy the data? So build the structure, deploy the data. Yes, we do. So again, what it then may do is it may ask you for the password, which I set up before. And off it goes now to Analysis Services to actually build this particular dimension. But notice, I'm not building the entire cube. I'm only building this dimension. So let's just run that. And all being well, process has succeeded. Um, if I expand that, notice now these other dimension values are in here, the English education first name, and it's telling you number of rows that have been included. Now, here's the interesting thing is, um, look at that marital status. Three rows have been read. Well, hang on, there's 18,000 rows, so why is there only three rows? Because there's only three distinct types. You're either married, you're not, or we don't know. Um, so let's just click on close and close again. Now, here's the interesting thing. At the moment, if I click on to something else and back in again, at the moment, nothing. But see down here, it says the dimension has been reprocessed on the server. You need to reconnect. So let's just reconnect. And now let's have a look. We're still customer key, but lo and behold, we have now got this other information. So just mentioned marital status. Let's have a quick um, look at that. Marital status, it's on all married, single, M and S. Uh, let's have a look at um, gender, female, male. Now this is highly denormalized data and also, wow, how complete is the data? I don't have a single unknown value whatsoever. Now in reality this is never going to be the case and you're going to have to do all this trapping in integration services. But for the purposes of training this is fantastic. The data is in a highly structured state which is, which is marvellous. So, we've now got a dimension. So, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to save that. I'm going to go back to my first cube. Now, has that dimension come across? Well, let's go into the dimensions tab. Because what this is doing is it's showing us the date, the date ship, and the due date. Now, again, this is something I was talking about earlier. Let me just open up the um, date source view. If I look at date, can you see it's been referred to three times as once? But in the cube design, it's been able to smartly identify these are going to be three completely separate dimensions that are going to be referenced. Fantastic. Brilliant. But there's no reference whatsoever of the customer. So what we need to do is where it says the word dimensions, just right click and then you should be able to add cube dimension. So we click onto that and then it says, OK, which one do we want? Well, we want customer and OK again. And immediately it's identified that the link between the fact table and the customer table is the customer key because it's the one to many relationship. So I'm just going to click on to save there. But again, get into the habit, we now need to process the cube again. So server is out to date. Do you want to process it? Yes, we do. So now what it has to do is it's not only the dimension, it's actually the cube that needs to be done. So if we run that and away we go we're done. So let's just click on close, close again. Now go to the browser and once more we may need to reconnect. I always tend to reconnect just to be on the safe side. And now if I go customer, oh look, we've now got some information. So let's say I want to look at internet sales, um, total sales amount um, by gender. There we go. So I've now seen my male and female breakdown. I may also want to actually look at um, the, uh, let's have a look, what have we got here? Um, well, we've got the marital status, so this will be an interesting matrix. So female married, male married versus single female and male. So very quickly, you can get the information. But can you see, look, ugh, horrible, loads of decimal places. The reason being is because we've not done any formatting of the actual measures yet, which we'll come to. So we've now got to a point of we've actually created our first dimension. Um, and we are at a state, let's just go back into it, where we are showing these fields. They are being shown in a friendly name. Um, and you could say, are we done? Well, 
not by a long shot, because the next step in dimensions, which will be the next video, is hierarchies. And the hierarchy section is all about this middle pane here. A hierarchy basically allows you to actually put information into a structured order. And the best way of looking at a hierarchy is tackling the date dimension. So, next video is all about the date dimension and hierarchies. So, thanks for watching.